Watching TV has changed over time. Streaming has become the new norm. That's why Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast dives headfirst to the world of cord cutting. Want to be on the loop of what's hot in Netflix? Or if it's not a preference, what about original shows in Hulu? We've got you covered. Join us as we fill in the blanks and talk about movies to stream and what show you should be binging. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Television Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Mr. Finn. So for today's rundown, we will be covering another four-segment podcast over the Naruto to Boruto series, which is which has been making headlines on Twitter as of lately, and I honestly just really want to give my thoughts and critiques on this. Um, I know that a lot of... Uh, yeah, the viewers here uh, may have heard of Boruto, and they've probably watched some of Naruto, but I just wanted to let you guys know more about it, uh, let you guys know that I'm also going to be covering these, uh, this, uh, this series. So if you want to know more, just go ahead and just kind of stick around, and at the end of the show, uh, I will give my top three picks of the newest uh, ninja from the Boruto cast. Um, and personally, I feel are super underrated. So besides that, yeah, let's go ahead and just get started. All right, guys. So for those who do not know what Boruto is, Boruto is a sequel to the Naruto series that ended about, say, six years ago. The Naruto series ran from 2002 to 2007 with director Masashi Kishimoto. Naruto, the series, had a continuation of the character's shown grown up and explaining you know what exactly went behind in the uh, um, original series and uh, everything was tied together later with the naruto shippuden uh, series that also ran from 2007 to 2017. so that's about like 10 years right uh way longer than the uh um, original run which is absolutely amazing uh the uh, shippuden series had so much just absolutely so much more in depth and personalities of the character with the lore and the story. Um, I definitely recommend watching it if you have not. But yeah, uh, that's basically my childhood. <laughs> and there's a lot of people as well. And, you know, like I said, that probably may or may have um, seen or watched um, the show, even like the manga. So yeah, it's honestly just really beautiful to, uh, to watch. I definitely recommend checking it out. But with all that being said, I did want to go ahead and just kind of give a quick um, ec- explanation of the series. So, you know, we start off with uh, Naruto and Sasuke being the main characters. They are basically childhood, childhood rivals. Um, and they are, they are like these ninjas. They uh, enter this academy. This academy basically hosts little 8 to uh, 16-year-old ninjas that are trying to basically make it in the world. Um, it's kind of like their job classification, so they really start them off really young to get a job, and most people do end up picking the uh, um, the ninja classification just because uh, they get paid as ninjas to go throughout th- through their missions. And yeah, uh, Naruto honestly has just been so successful in the world, and it's I personally don't really feel like it's uh, underrated. It's just there's just so much going on that people just don't really tend to stick around for it. Just because it has been around for about about 13 years, like, with the original and the uh, um, continuation. But yeah, Naruto has become one of the most recognized franchises and being the fourth best-selling manga series in history. Uh, selling about 250 million copies worldwide in 46 countries with 153 million um, of the sales 
uh, just being in Japan alone. And uh, the remaining 97 million copies are uh, elsewhere, which, you know, is more than likely via uh, the U.S. It has become one of the uh, business media's best-selling manga series. Their English translations of their volumes, you know, have appeared all over uh, USA Today, uh, the, the New York Times, um, listing it as just like the best seller. And yeah, it's even won like awards, honestly. Uh, the Naruto series has just... It's completely changed so many lives, honestly, and uh, it's definitely just something to keep like an eye out for, especially with this new continuation. So after just so much uh, success, the Naruto creators just wanted to expand the series a little bit more with continuing that lore, bringing in new audiences, the the uh, the new generations, if you will, that didn't really grow up with the show like the rest of us. And that continuation is. Boruto, Naruto Next Generations, which began in the Japanese and English editions of the weekly uh, Shonen Jump uh, in about early 2016. Uh, originally, the whole series was made with uh, Kishimoto, but eventually he kind of passed that torch down to his uh, to his right-hand man, Ikimoto. And with that supervision of Kishimoto from time to time, he would kind of come and just be like, okay, well, hey, uh, fix that or change this. But uh, Kishimoto is more of a uh, cutthroat artist, if you will. He does not mind killing off characters, while uh, Ikimoto is more of that slice of life anime. Uh, very, you know, uh, in the moment, if you will. Uh, this is definitely something that you will see within that Boruto series. So do not take it to heart when you see stuff like that. I personally love slice of life anime episodes, uh, and you know some people don't, which is totally fine. Everyone has their own opinion, which I totally understand. However, this is something a little, a little bit of like a mix. So definitely just keep that in mind when you are watching it. So uh, with with these changes, uh, Kishimoto did you know, pass that torch down to Ikimoto. He had his own, uh, he had his own manga kind of brewing. It was called Samurai 8, which unfortunately did not really make it past, uh, I believe about like 15 volumes. And with that decrease in manga sales, unfortunately they could not continue with the manga. So Samurai 8 was unfortunately shut down, but not before we did, uh, get released with more of uh, the information of like the backstory it was kind of like a uh, technology meets naruto yeah naruto borto kind of like that same area uh, it was very like uh it was kind of like star wars a little bit uh, there was a little bit of like a lore like that honestly it was really, really interesting. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, it just didn't really go past that manga content. Uh, they were thinking about going into a little more into the uh, the anime version of it, but, you know, it just didn't go through, unfortunately. So, unfortunate there. And with that happening, uh, Kishimoto decided to go back into the uh, Boruto series and help out with the rest of uh, what is going on at the manga chapters which we will talk about at a later point. But yeah, that's kind of like the, the 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 duo between the two. They kind of like went back and forth and just kind of helped each other out. So that being said, Borto The Next Generations has been aired for about four years, starting back in 2017 and continuing to have episodes every Sunday. While the series does have pacing issues, it shows promise in the world what we knew before being exposed to uh, high technology in the world. Uh, well, that isn't promised with uh, ninjutsu skills or typical uh, Naruto world pacing. Naruto is very old school shinobi-like with like the uh, Bushido throwing of like the shurikens. Uh, honestly, it, it's, it's kind of hard to pinpoint what exact era the Naruto world is in. Uh, we are revealed later that it is a bit more like in like the 90s, 80s era, which is definitely really interesting always. Uh, but 
yeah uh in the uh the boruto series we we do kind of see more like a faster paced world we see more of like technology uh and we kind of are able to see more of um, what they were able to build within that series so you know this world is a complete different pace uh that justifies that the sh that, that the uh, shinobi world is kind of coming to an end uh with the more high technology uh you know, livid world, but um, it's definitely something that the uh, next generation of ninjas can prepare to change for that. So for all that being said, um, I do recommend checking it out. Uh, the Naruto series did definitely have a really, really great run. It was absolutely amazing. It was beautiful. It had so much, uh, so much character, so much development. And honestly, there was just so many like shockers uh, going with that that going with that uh, continuation. Um, one thing that I do kind of wish uh, for myself personally is that I uh, um, I would have watched it more as I was um, you know growing up. Uh, I I watched the series in the uh, uh, tsunami. Uh, tsunami is a um, it's basically what you would watch with like. Cartoon Network, but it was kind of like a, a adult kind of. It was like a adult Cartoon Network, but with uh, more anime. So that definitely was something interesting growing up. But unfortunately, I didn't really get to watch all of it around that time. But when I did, man, Naruto was just absolutely amazing. It was uh, really beautiful, beautifully written. The the uh, uh, the fights were also amazing. There was just there's so much going on and so much, you know, world to give. So if you were able to watch uh, Naruto when it was coming out every Saturday on Toonami, give yourself a pat on the back. It was definitely just like a big change in pace of anime, which I honestly truly hope that this next series of Boruto will kind of help the, uh, the, the new readers understand more about it. Uh, they'll be able to kind of have their own fire within them of learning more about what exactly the uh, shinobi is the, the uh, sorry the shinobi world is uh becoming just because i know that it starts off a little slow uh but i am going to go back in the uh, uh, certain arcs and just kind of talk about them uh throughout the next couple of weeks and just kind of get to know more about uh anything that we miss and you know talk about it so if you are definitely interested in that, if you just want to have a really good discussion of the Borto series, uh, just make sure to always uh, check in with me every week. We're going to be going over this and uh, definitely find any kind of mistakes or anything that we need to be looking at um, that we need to potentially just point out. Because I know that the series isn't exactly perfect just yet. Uh, even like Naruto had its own flaws, you know. Uh, a lot of the uh, original Naruto content had a lot of fillers. Same thing with Shippuden. But honestly, it's it was out for about 10 years, right? So I don't really blame them for creating fi uh, fillers. But there definitely was a lot of really good fillers as well. Same with the, uh, the Borto series. So while we are going forward with that, I truly do hope that we can uh, find common ground with the, uh, the uh, Borto series. It's... It's a lot. Uh, there is just so much going on that I didn't really understand at first until I went back and I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. Like this is, this is this is definitely different than Naruto, that's for sure. But there really is a true a true reason why they're doing everything. Even in one of the uh, the panels, um, it was a uh, like an author panel. Uh, Kishimoto stated that. Every episode that Boruto has is non-filler. It all ties in with the uh, the next episode or like the uh, the arc at a later point, which is kind of hard to believe because there are some episodes that are a little questionable about that. But it definitely is going to be something that maybe at some point that we just didn't realize and we have to look back at it and be like, "Wow, it was right. This is definitely not a filler." I personally find it hard to believe, but you know. Pretty sure in a couple years, uh, it'll prove me wrong. So, yeah. Uh, and the uh, the, the next topic, we're just gonna go ahead and go over more about the uh, the uh, the Naruto world. 
Um, just for the other viewers that do not know what Naruto is exactly, learn more about the characters, learn more about what exactly the point of the uh, Naruto series is, and the, uh, uh, we'll kind of go more into the uh, continuation of Boruto and uh, hopefully, you know, get some viewers to understand why Boruto is great. So yeah, uh, we'll see you after the break. Want to know the latest and hottest music hidden the airwaves? Don't be left out. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast. Know from pop, rock, hip hop, and the top 40, and we'll throw in news of your favorite artists, concert and tour dates, and so much more. Listen no further because this is the gold standard in music podcast. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Television Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Like I said, I am your host, Mr. Finn, and we, we will be going over the uh, uh, the fourth segment podcast over the Naruto to Borto series. The last time that we were talking, we did go over the Naruto series a little bit, just more about like the history, why it was just so famous, and um, kind of like the history be between the two creators, uh, Kishimoto and uh, Ikimoto. But uh, in this next segment, I did want to go over a little bit more on the lore and the characters and just kind of understand them more. Uh, and uh, also don't forget that at the end of the, uh, the whole podcast, I will go over the top three characters of the, uh, uh, the next generation who I believe are going to be uh, top tier. They're going to be the best, the best, in my opinion. So uh, just stay tuned for that. Uh, yeah. So, all right, guys. Um, just from like the look of the Naruto series and just kind of how it uh, it formed um, from the, uh, the Boruto Next Generation series, um, we do want to kind of know more about the backstory just so that way that you have a better understanding of, you know, who are these characters and just why are they so important. Uh, and for those, of the, for those of you who do not know um, the characters from the original story, we have uh, the main people like uh, Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura, Choji, uh, Ino, Shikamaru, Hinata, Shino, Kiba, Rock Lee, Tenten, Neji, <laughs> and of course there's, you know, going to be more like Gara and um, Tamari and, you know, Konkuro, but those are more of a, um, they're not really side characters, but they kind of become more relevant later in the series, um, but these are basically all just like, um, these are like squads from like certain teams. The main people that that we want to focus on are going to be Naruto and Sasuke uh, and Sakura. Um, and these teams are from the uh, the Hidden Leaf Village. Um, and kind of like the role of a ninja is, you know, you this is like your job. Uh, you get assigned at a very young age which job career choice you want to kind of go into, um, and that's just going to be. It could be like a medical examiner, it could be like a postman, or you could just be a ninja, right? So, of course, a lot of people uh, pick ninjas just because you kind of learn more about, like, your family's history, learn more about the ways of, uh, you know, martial arts and, like, a ninjutsu. Uh, there, there is a lot of different lore behind it. Uh, every single village has its own Kekai Genkai, which basically is like a passed down, it's like a... It's a passed down jutsu that only the family members of that village uh, knows about. So a lot of the people are kind of like forced, not really forced, but like they feel obligated to go into that ninja route. Uh, of course, you do see people choose different uh, paths along the way, but the main ones, of course, you know, stick with it. So, you know, as they go off uh, from the village as ninja, um, they also have the opportunity to battle other ninja to uh, protect themselves and their village uh, for people that are, you know, misguided. Maybe they don't really know much about why they're doing this. Maybe they're just literal, uh, you know, soldiers to only fight for the village. It's it's honestly kind of sad if you really think about it, but it really does help uh, the motive of a lot of characters in the series. So uh, 
just kind of keep that in mind as you are watching or reading the manga. But yeah, so uh, for those who uh, do, know, do know the main story, we know that the uh, um, in the original Naruto series, uh, it was about Naruto and Sasuke who uh, ri rivaled each other. Um, they kind of grew up together. Uh, they absolutely hated each other. <laughs> and they are practically uh, eventually going to be like the strongest individuals in the uh, uh, Naruto world. See, so Naruto, Uzumaki, he has this uh, he has this power inside of him. It's called the uh, the Nine Tails, uh, and there's basically you know other tails out there. These tails kind of give the uh, uh, the, the vessel like power, power based off their uh, like unique skill sets. So what Naruto has is he has like a fox demon inside of him. And that fox demon was basically sealed inside of him by his own father, who is Minato Uzumaki. Uh, Minato was the, uh, the fourth Hokage, who was an amazing ninja, so skillful. Uh, unfortunately, he did die uh, sealing the, uh, the fire, or sorry, the fox uh, inside of Naruto. And Naruto was basically kind of shunned uh, from the village because of that, which is really unfortunate, considering that uh, his dad was the Hokage. The Hokage is also basically kind of like like the president of like the village. They are in charge of everything. They are also the most powerful ninja in that village. So kind of like thinking about it, Minato is super powerful. And eventually Naruto wants to become Hokage instinctively. He does not know that his dad is a Hokage, but eventually we kind of like learn more about that. Um, and the story about Sasuke is... Uh, Sasuke, he is the sole survivor of the uh, um, Uchiha clan. So his name is Sasuke Uchiha, and everyone in his uh, village is a, uh, guess it, there, you guessed it, Uchiha. Um, the uh, uh, Uchiha are able to possess a rare Kekai Genkai called the uh, um, Sharingan. And the Sharingan is basically kind of like this power that uh, enables you to have... Uh, either really tactical vision as in like if you were to try to attack me i would see your attack before you even attack me or maybe i'm able to uh, copy your moves um if you fight me like a certain way or if you hit me with a certain um attack like a jutsu uh, i am able to stop that as well or not stop it but i'm able to copy that and use it for my own uh and or you know, also the uh, Uchiha are known for being like fire uh, breathers, basically. But uh, for those that don't know, uh, the whole way that the Naruto series is made up is uh, um, there's this thing called chakra. And what chakra is, is uh, it's essentially just kind of like, there's like pinpoints in your body that if you shut it off, then um, you are shut off through that chakra. Uh, the Naruto, in the Naruto series, all of their chakra is basically not shut off. Like they are able to breathe fire, uh, produce electricity, uh, move the earth. You know, it's it's kind of like Avatar less uh, Airbender esque, but it's more um, through like the uh, forbidden art that has been passed down through the uh, generations, through the uh, Kekai Genkai, um, and they are just amazing people. Um, and that chakra is like the key to helping them uh, become who they need to be, who, who they want to be uh, throughout life. And Naruto has an extremely amount of insane chakra inside of him, especially with that uh, um, that le legendary uh, fox spirit inside of him. Uh, and Sasuke kind of eventually, because he has a Sharingan, he just gets really, really good by himself, uh, just like through training um, and his own little, you know, his own little way but yeah uh chakra is all within us um and it, and, and the uh, the anime it's um used to solve problems create chaos just kind of depends on that person's mood that day honestly uh and ninjas are basically kind of like also the uh, um the uh, uh the police uh they could be policemen they could just be the uh, um authority figure within that village uh they kind of choose what goes and you know what stays 
And if you're able to possess uh, amazing jutsu uh, through, through your chakra, um, then you are basically in charge. <laughs> so uh, eventually, uh, they kind of do able they can they kind of um, are able to really hone in certain chakras, certain jutsus, and create their own kind of you know um, their own kind of say. So. It's definitely really interesting to watch um, in terms of that. Uh, everyone kind of has their own like Kekai Genkai or their own special uh, ability. So definitely um, keep that in mind that no one is the same. But yeah, so kind of going forward, Naruto does end up joining a team. When you are um, like a ninja, you are initially assigned a team. And a lot of the teams end up um, in a... Uh, three-man squad typically and uh, Naruto joins the team uh, which is called uh, Team 7 which is comprised of a squadron you know like I said with other teammates that you know go on missions they earn money from these missions and um, from that team we have uh, Sasuke Uchiha like I said who is that sole survivor of the Uchiha clan um, he has that Sharingan which is absolutely amazing um, and they really uh utilize him um a lot more throughout the series since that shargon just has like tremendous strength um and then we do end up seeing more of uh, the 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 third teammate who is uh sakura harno um she's a bit of like a spunky uh really loud really um easily annoyed uh, uh female lead um she has bright pink hair uh, she is a beginner at everything. Uh, she eventually does get like a lot better, but it takes her a while. So a lot of people hate on her uh, just because she had like a really bad uh, beginning. But she ends up just being so much better of a person in uh, like the Borto series and also like the ending of Shippuden. So uh, definitely do not keep her, you know, on the sidelines. She does get like a lot better. And guess and uh, guess what? She has a uh, insane crush on Sasuke. Sasuke is always consistently uh, rejecting her. Um, just has absolutely no love for her. Um, I still don't think he does, but that could be obviously uh, battled. So uh, yeah, it's kind of like a thing. They go back and forth, and Sakura absolutely loves him, and he's just like no. Um, but. They are led by this uh, uh, skillful um, Jonin leader, um, and, and Jonin is basically like the next step um, from Chunin. So there's like a there's like a ranking, right? So you have um, like the academy. After the academy, you have Genin. After Genin, you have Chunin, uh, and then Jonin, and then you also have the uh, Hokage. Um, or, yeah, it kind of, like, depends, I guess. Like, Hokage is, like, you know, like I said, like, the president. Uh, just because you're joining doesn't mean you go straight to Hokage. You have to be really, really skillful uh, within that village. But, yeah, uh, it's just kind of like a ranking system. And Jonin are typically the, uh, like, the squad leaders of that certain squadron. So um, we have Kakashi uh, Hatsuke, uh, who is that squad leader for Team 7. Uh, he also possesses the uh, Sharingan by a tragic fate uh, that is later said in the series. Uh, but he uses it for his own needs, his own doing. He does help Team 7 become the team that uh, that they want to be. He is, he's an amazing guy. Uh, he is easily one of the best shinobi in the villages. Uh, truly humble and skillful at what he does. He was part of uh, Naruto's dad's. Uh, squadron who is Monado, like I said before, uh, who also has other team members that kind of play more a part in the story of uh, uh, Shippuden with that uh, Obito and Ren. Um, but Kakashi ends up being like the main character from that, and he just takes on so much. Uh, and for those that don't really know about Obito, uh, Obito is a boy that was, like I said, on uh, Monado's team, um, Kakashi's teammate. Uh, he is said to be dead. Uh, he gives his eyes, his uh, uh, Sharingan, because Obito is a Uchiha. So uh, he gives his eye to Kakashi, so that way that he's able to utilize the Sharingan more than Obito, because Obito 
is Crush that uh, his teammate Ren has passed on uh, by accident, uh, who is said to uh, be believed that Kakashi killed Ren. Um, and that's just like a whole different drama there, honestly. But it's definitely, it's definitely in Shippuden. I recommend watching more of it. It really, really gets good. Uh, I'm not going to spoil like too much, but uh, Obito and Ren are definitely the main characters in Shippuden, and Kakashi has to kind of like resolve his own past uh, through there. But yeah, he honestly becomes so much more like cooler in the series. He ends up becoming the uh, uh, the sixth Hokage after the uh, um, the fifth, who is uh, Tsunade. Tsunade is important, but she's not really really important in the Boruto series, so. I'm kind of just going over the uh, the main people. Um, but yeah, so um, I know that was a lot. <laughs> but we'll definitely go over uh, more of the uh, the teams and, you know, who is comprised of the team and just, like, how special they are. But uh, yeah, thanks for uh, listening to this second segment. Like I said, we'll go over uh, what's going to be next on the third uh, when we are starting. But yeah, um, I'll see you guys after the break. Bye. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. All right, guys, welcome back from the break. This is uh, uh, Mr. Finn with the uh, GSMC Television Podcast. And uh, today we're going to go ahead and cover more about the Naruto Borto series. Uh, on our last segment, we did go over more about the uh, the Naruto uh, world, uh, what exactly what it is to be a ninja, and uh, just more about like what is the point of like the anime slash series. Um, but now we're going to go over more about the teams and who is comprised of each, just because it's going to be really, really important later in the series of who is who. Uh, and yeah, so we'll kind of go more into that. Just make sure to stay for the, uh, the end of the, uh, the podcast that I am doing today, just because I will go ahead and let you go, let you guys know more about the, uh, the top three, uh, skilled getting, uh, the new Borto, um, series. Um, if you are just, you know, getting into it, this could be really, really helpful. So that way that you guys can kind of, you know, already pick favorites. Uh, but yeah, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get more into it. Uh, so yeah, so after the, uh, um, after the series took off, we, we eventually learned more about the characters and just how important they are to one another for, uh, uh character growth. And now we're going to get more into, uh, you know, each team, understand more about their reasonings, uh, for being in the show. Uh, and you know throughout the series, uh, Naruto does go through go Naruto does go throughout these trials, and he does end up meeting other ninja um, that are just like him, either wanting the same thing to be Hokage, uh, or you know like it, it's it's said differently in different villages, but uh, it's basically all the same um, Hokage, uh, or you know to bring honor to the village, or just become like the top ninja in their village in general. So first we have. Uh, Lady Kurinai, who is in charge of Team 8, which includes Kiba, Hanada, and Shino. Uh, widely considered as one of the most underrated teams in Konoha, Team 8 is actually very powerful and specializes in tracking and detection. By the conclusion of the Naruto series, this team went on to become very successful, 
completing a formidable number of missions along the way. Even without Kurinai, they played a significant role in the fourth Great Ninja War right to its very end. It goes without saying that Team 8 is one of the strongest in the series. Uh, so with those that don't really know the uh, the characters like uh, um, specifically, Kurinai is a uh, a master at Genjutsu. Uh, she she's not really shown a lot. Like she is, but she's not like super super relevant in the story. But they kind of like hype her up in the beginning, which is totally fine. Um, Kiba basically has like his um his dog uh, Akamaru. Uh, they basically combine jutsus together. So kind of like I said earlier in the other segments that uh, every ninja has like their own kekai genkai they have their own uh, ninja way um kiba is a master of um animal jutsus so every everything that he does is with his dog which is pretty cool honestly i like that little spin um like something new you know uh so then you see uh hanada hanada hyuga she is part of the hyuga clan so kind of like how konoha is uh kind of like divided we have like the main village, which is Konoha, and then we have the Uchiha clan, Soul Survivor Sasuke, and then we have the Hyuga clan. Uh, so the Hyuga clan has a very special Kekai Genkai, just like the Sharingan, whereas uh, the Sharingan is more about like tactical uh, ninja or jutsu copying, genjutsus, which is like a, a illusion type of fighting technique. The uh, Byakugan is basically more about seeing through somebody. So if I had the Byakugan, I could basically see through like your um like your bones. Like I could see like what exactly is going to, you know, crack. Or maybe I have to see a hundred miles away. I can see, you know, I can see whoever. It's it's honestly really, really helpful. Uh it's like an all-seeing kind of eye, which is really interesting. Uh Hinata is or she, she does go through her own, like, uh, trivial trials um, throughout the series, but she does end up becoming an excellent shinobi uh, that is part of that Hyuga clan. And then we have Shino. Shino is, he has, like, his, like, his own family's Kekai Genkai is basically, like, they're able to master bugs. Uh, he has a whole bunch of bugs inside his body, so whenever he wants to attack, he like lets some he lets some of the bugs go from like under like his arm or something. And honestly, it's kind of gross, <laughs> but it is pretty interesting to see uh, in battle. He was very very uh, very tactical, very skillful uh, throughout the series. Uh, unfortunately, he does kind of get sidelined in the Boruto series, but you know he's a really good character overall. Uh, Shino does end up becoming uh, a academy instructor, uh, so he does instruct Borto later in the series. Like I said, Hinata, she becomes really important to Borto as well, as she is Borto's mother. Yep, and you guessed it. Uh, Naruto and Hinata have a kid. <laughs> so it's definitely something really interesting there. Uh, and then we have Kiba. Kiba is, you know, like I said, he's... He's not too relevant in the series. There's 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 a character that's kind of similar to, to him, but not really. Um Kiba definitely is a lot stronger. But uh yeah. Unfortunately he's just kind of sidelined as well. Um as we get to the next uh team, uh we do have the Inashika Cho. So Inashika Cho, that's basically a team name where it comprises of uh Ino, Shikamaru, and Choji. Uh, this team was built upon incredible teamwork and shrewd tactics, which made up for the lack of its strength. Uh, its members were, um, you know, like I said, Shikamaru Nara, uh, who was known for his intellect. Um, Ino, who is famous for his sensory uh, jutsu. And Choji, who is basically the powerhouse uh, when it comes to fighting. Uh, together, these three arguably um, are the steadiest team that uh, we've seen in Naruto. Uh, their sensei, uh, Asuma. Um... Unfortunately, does end up uh, passing. He is their, their squad leader, and he is uh, very, very important to them. Um, honestly, yeah. 
if you are watching the Boruto series, um, I'm assuming you have seen the Naruto series, so then you would know that he has passed, like I said. But yeah, it's it, it was pretty sad. Uh, and then the next thing we go into is going to be Gara's team. Um, so Gara's up from Naruto, uh, you know, Shippuden or like their original. Um, he has two siblings, uh, Kankuro and Tamari. Uh, and as the, the children of the Force Kazekage, so you know how I said earlier that the Hokage uh, isn't always said the same in every village? In the uh, the Sand Village, uh, which is where they're from, it's called the Kazekage. Uh, and all three of these shinobi um, are excellent in combat, especially as a team. Uh, surprisingly, uh, you know, Gara was just, you know, the strongest. I mean, honestly, there really is no surprise there. Uh, you know, although Konkuro and Tamari uh, aren't really too far behind, um, they do kind of end up uh, lacking a little bit in terms of strength. Gara just becomes like a super big powerhouse. Uh, Gara does end up revealing that he has his own, uh, uh, I believe it's a one tail. Um, so you know how like Naruto has like the nine tail? Uh, Gara has a one tail. So he is basically almost as strong as Naruto. They end up kind of um, clashing a little bit in the series, but they end up being super close. They end up being uh, best friends, just like how Naruto does for everyone else. They, they're always best friends after they beat Naruto. Uh, and um, Gar had, you know, risen to be like the next um, Kazekage. So he, he does end up becoming the Hokage, which, you know, for that uh, sound village. And becoming the youngest uh, Kage ever in the process. So this team basically has just like a whole bunch of like prodigies. And they display their potential to the maximum within the show. All right, so then the uh, the next one is going to be Konoha's strongest Jonin, uh, Mike Guy, who is, uh, you know, it's basically a team guy, uh, which is consisting of Rock Lee, Neji Hyuga, and Tintin. So just like Guy, um, Rock Lee specializes in the use of Taijutsu and has mastered the eight inner gates over the years. So for those that don't know what the inner gates are, uh, my guy basically kind of like created like his own version of like a jutsu. Uh, he basically has no jutsu, like he has no like chakra flow in that sense. But he he has trained his body so well to the point where he is able to kind of like create like his own tai jutsu that specializes in like his concentration. So there's like eight inner gates, uh, and my guy does end up becoming super super crucial in the uh the fourth war arc as well uh but uh yeah rock lee kind of like he kind of like gets better throughout the series as well uh like just like my guy he learns how to open the uh um, eight inner gates just like him um they're basically son and father even though they're they're not actually related but it's really cute honestly i really i, I really love them both um and neji was a, a huga prodigy uh, he was strong enough to be promoted to the rank of Jonin during the two-year time skip, while Tintin is exceptionally skilled in basically throwing, like, kunais and, like, chains and stuff like that. Um, unfortunately, the team is no longer active after the death of Neji Hyuga during the Fourth Great War. Uh, but, you know, nonetheless, they were a really, really great team. Uh, Neji is related to uh, Hinata. They are cousins. And um, Borto is actually named after Neji uh, in like a really strange way. So because Hinata marries into the Uzumaki clan, which is, you know, uh, Naruto Uzumaki, uh, they have like a lot of respect towards Neji. And after he died, it was a really big thing, but they were able to keep it going like that fire of will. So yeah, uh, rest in peace, Neji. But yeah, so uh, after we just kind of talked about all these teams, uh, I feel like we kind of start to understand more about like just how important these uh, uh, specific ninja are, um, you know, to each of like their own and just like how far they've come from being like basic ninjas to like amazing shinobi. Uh, however, um, this is not exactly the, um, the end of the podcast. I did want to go more into uh, just exactly what is Boruto and um like the characters more and you know what we have to look forward to this um and just like with any other good anime series of course there is pairings uh 
Let's see. So we have we have Choji. Choji ends up marrying um one of the uh, uh the squadrons from the uh I believe it's like the lightning. Yeah, the, the lightning village. Um I can't like like remember her name like right off the top of the bat, but uh they end up having a kid, um, and that kid is Chocho. Um Chocho basically kind of has like the same kind of mindset as Choji. Um she absolutely loves, you know, uh food. She's super sassy. She's really funny in the series, honestly. Um I absolutely love her. Uh and definitely want to uh, see her grow more. Uh we do see that um Tamari from uh Gara's team ends up getting with Shikamaru and they have a kid named Shikadai. Uh Shikadai has Tamari's eyes and um Shikamaru's like outer appearance. So um it's pretty interesting there. They are utilizing him a little bit more in the series. Um so definitely keep that in mind and you know stay tuned. Uh we also see that uh Sasuke and Sakura have a kid uh named Sarada. Uh and Sarada has her mom's monster strength uh and her dad's visual prowess, uh, which is, you know, the Sharingan. Uh Sarada is an absolute powerhouse as well. She is teamed with um uh, Boruto. So yeah, they kind of end up like really um going like full circle with it. It's really cute. Uh definitely look more into that as well. Um uh, Rock Lee has a kid. It's not really disclosed who the mother is, but his name is Metal Lee. And Metal Lee is also really awesome as well. Uh we kind of learn kind of learn more about him throughout the series. Uh definitely recommend checking that out as well. But yeah, uh we'll kind of get more into the uh the characters a little more uh of Boruto after the break um thank you guys so much for staying uh this far in the podcast uh i definitely want to start doing more of these boruto podcasts so uh, if you guys are super interested just you know make sure to stay tuned um follow me on twitter and we'll kind of go forward um with that see you in a few Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. guys welcome back from the break i am your host mr finn and thank you for tuning in to the gsmc television podcast brought to you by the gsmc podcast network today we will be covering our last segment over the uh, naruto to borto series which has been making headlines on twitter instagram and facebook all right guys so i know last time when we talked we were going over more about like the characters and why they're relevant to the story uh i know that we went over the certain teams and the um relevancy however uh, i can guarantee you that uh it'll be more full circle after i kind of like explain about these new characters and just exactly who they are and why they're important as well uh yeah so for for those that do not know or watch the borto series just yet The Boruto anime takes place 15 years after the end of the series. Uh, So Naruto is 32 in Boruto, and so is the rest of the uh, the members of that uh, that group that we were just talking about. Uh, Boruto is now 12 years old, um, just like the rest of his crew as well. Um, And so, you know, we kind of like have an idea that, you know, what they're doing is more of a new legacy kind of thing. 
uh, Boruto with his new legacy, Naruto with his old legacy, kind of like passing down the, cho the passing down that torch. So that's honestly really cool to kind of think about. Uh, I do like that a little more. Uh, so yeah, so after just watching the first episode, uh, we do see Boruto as an older ninja versus uh, a boy around the same age uh, named Kawaki. Uh, they end up clashing swords and uh, the, the guy Kawaki, he states uh, the Age of Shinobi are, are over. I'm going to send you where I sent the seventh Hokage, who is, if you guys do not know, it is now Naruto. Naruto is the Hokage of the uh, um, in the Boruto series. Uh, Boruto looks up and he has a, a huge gash over his eye. Uh, and we see that his eye is also white. Uh, he puts his headband and then he states that, you know, I am still a shinobi. So just kind of looking at that, uh, we kind of realize that this is like the new like dynamic duo, the new Sasuke and Naruto. However, um, I don't really think that's the case. I think that there might be a little more than what we're seeing here. Uh, you know, more about like who is this this guy Kawaki? You know, and like what did he do to Naruto? Uh, where did he send him? Did he defeat him? Did he do something that he shouldn't be doing? You know, uh, it. It's a little interesting, honestly. I do like the uh, direction, like I said, that they're going with. Um, I do hope that we see more about Kawaki uh, later in the series. But uh, what's more interesting is with what is uh, um, what Nar or sorry, what Boruto is wearing. Uh, we do see that uh, the village is destroyed. Uh, it looks like it took place a couple years. Uh, Boruto seems to be about like sixteen now. Um, and like with like the episode in general, you know, like I said, he's like 12, but Borto, he has a sword and he has a cape and that sword and the cape looks just like Sasuke's. So that makes me wonder where's Sasuke in this, you know, uh, Kawaki is like, I'll send you where I sent the seventh, which is Naruto, but where did he send Sasuke? <laughs> so that kind of makes me a little little nervous uh sasuke is one of the uh, the main original characters just like naruto and they do end up um having like a big fallout throughout the uh, shippuden and naruto or, like, original naruto series and they end up being best buddies uh naruto is the uh you know like i said the hokage sasuke is the uh like the shadow hokage which is kind of like um naruto is like the main face and sasuke like does all does all the fighting in the background like he takes care of people that needs to be taken care of uh and sasuke is definitely that kind of guy so it's just a little uh worrisome uh are we kind of seeing where uh, borto becomes more of a uh, a sasuke than like taking his father's mantle um wanting to be the hokage uh we do see more into that a little bit uh but moving forward just like from these two original characters uh, missing and these two uh, new characters being like the main center of the uh, attention, we do kind of like just see that resemblance a little bit more, which is pretty awesome. But yeah, with that flashback, uh, we do see Borto with uh, another Genin. Uh, his name is Shikadai. And if you listen to the last segment, we do know that Shikadai is the son of Shikamaru and Tamari. Uh, Tamari is the one of the fan, uh, and Sh Shikamaru is, uh, or he, he is Naruto's, uh, best friend, and Shikadai states that he is Boruto's best friend as well. So, I think that's a little cute, too. I, honestly, I really like the idea of, like, legacy and passing down that torch, so, uh, I hope that we do see more of Shikadai and Boruto interacting with each other. Uh, I would like to see Shikadai, uh, have kind of like a combination of like his dad's powers and his mom's powers because his mom is actually not from the um uh, konoha which is the uh, village in, in the hidden leaves she is from the sand so is shikamaru gonna have kind of like a good like combination of the uh, uh like sand you know jutsu just like her um just like his mom uh, as well as the, uh, um, I'm sorry, it's drawing, it's drawing a blank, <laughs> as well as the, uh, uh, the shadow, you know, the shadow paralysis jutsu. Uh, so 
I kind of want to see more of that. That would be really, really interesting if they do end up utilizing both of those. Um, and Shikadai might be a good powerhouse there as well. He might be better than both of his parents, which that would be really awesome to see as well. Yeah. So kind of going forward from that, uh, Shikamaru does have um, more say in what Naruto does being Hokage, seeing that Shikamaru is like the right-hand man. He's like the guy that's like, okay, well, we need to do this. We need to go to war. We need to whichever. Um, which I, I kind of like because it kind of goes from like Naruto and Shikamaru just being best friends to you are like my best friend and like I give you complete trust into this. Um, it really shows the uh, um, dynamic more, the friendship, um, them growing more uh, as friends. That's pretty awesome. And uh, just kind of going from that, we do see a new Genning named Denki. Uh, Denki is the heir to the uh, Kam. I'm sorry if I Kaminarian. Oh my gosh, <laughs> he is basically in charge of a company that is the biggest company in the Hidden Leaf, Leaf Village that has access to the uh, uh, the trains. Um, so that really helps with the uh, transportation. Uh, Denki seems to be more of a a, a book smart. Uh, uh, guy uh, rather than uh, you know ninjutsu or like techniques uh, he does want to become more of a ninja just like Boruto as Boruto kind of helps save him a little bit more from his self-doubt sorry self, self-doubt self uh, they do end up becoming uh, best buds in this episode uh, and decides to um, undergo more of like ninja training with Boruto uh, going into the uh, uh, um, academy so what we do end up seeing, though, in this first episode is that Borto, uh, he has his white eye, which they showed in the very first 10 seconds of the uh, Borto episode. So it kind of teases, like, what the eye can kind of do, um, as he does end up seeing Dark Chakra in, Denki, um, in, in, in Denki's body. So as he realizes that, as he sees it, um, we see like the white eye kind of like light up. So that's kind of like a cool little like nod to like what we can see in the future, uh, what exactly Boruto's um, eye can do. Uh, and we do end up uh, finding out that it is called like the pure eye um, or also known as the, uh, the Jogan. So I don't really know much about the Jogan. I would like to speculate that it might be a good mutation of the Byakugan and Sharingan. Or could just be a big, big hybrid of the Byakugan just because he is related to Hinata. Uh, Hinata does have that um, Byakugan, so it might be something like that. Or it might be a different kind of mutation. Who knows? Uh, I guess we'll just have to find out. But yeah, so uh, you know, not much really known yet about that eye. Um, but we do see more uh, Genning throughout the, the episode as well. Um, the the kids in Boruto's academy class is Chocho, who is the daughter of uh, Choji. Um, kind of have like a similar personality, but Chocho is more uh, extroverted, very sassy, very like get like what she wants kind of person. Uh, but she seems to be like a powerhouse as well, very strong. Um, along with the uh, the new uh, formation of the Inashika Cho, so it comprises of Chocho. Uh, Shukadai, and then we have a new character, Eno Enojin. Uh, Enojin is the, uh, the son of Sai and um, uh, Eno. Uh, Sai is basically a character that is like later introduced in the uh, Shippuden era. Uh, he ends up working for the uh, um, the foundation uh, with Hanzo. Um, Hanzo is a bad guy. He gets out of it. He joins uh, Team 7 for a little bit while Sasuke is doing bad things. So they end up kind of becoming more, uh, you know, clicky. And Sai is like, well, you know what? I like you, Eno. So they end up having a kid who is now Enojin. Um, Enojin kind of has like a mixture of his parents' jutsus as well. He has the, uh, um, like the sensory, uh, just like Enojin. Sorry, just, just like Eno. And then he also draws just like Sai uh, dealing um, aerial attacks from that, um, from those drawings, and uh, kind of going from there, we do see that Wasabi. Uh, not really, not much is really known about Wasabi. Uh, Wasabi is with uh, uh, Nabida and Samir. Um, Wasabi is kind of like a cat version of Kiwa. 
and uh, Navida is still a work in progress. Um, it seems like she just like her jutsu is crying. Um, I'm not really sure what what we can do with that just yet, but it might be more information later down the road. Uh, Samir is kind of like the team lead. Um, she ends up being more involved uh, like later in the story. Um, I believe that her arc is coming up, so we learn more about her a little more. Uh, and then, you know, last but not least, we do have Sarada uh, um, Uchiha, who is the daughter of Sasuke and Sakura. Uh, she is also a powerhouse. She basically has uh, Sasuke's uh, Sharingan, and she has uh, Sakura's uh, monster strength. And she kind of like combines both of them together, uh, which is really, really nice to see, honestly. Uh, I do hope that they kind of like combine more with her and that they kind of uh, show more of like what she can do compared to her parents. And then um, later, we also see that uh, Orochimaru, who is big time villain in the Nar the original Bar uh, sorry, original Naruto series, later in Shippuden, uh, he has a son named uh, Mitsuki. Mitsuki is this pale complected kid that uh a little sn uh snake like but absolutely just loves boruto um honestly kind of like obsessed uh keeps talking about boruto being like his his son while he is the moon um don't really know much about that yet but that is a little weird but um of course the anime is going to expand on that a little bit more um but mitsuki is seems to be a really good relatively amazing shinobi already um you know being like a like the age of 12 pretty great um uh, i do kind of like this dynamic of having like the new um you know like the new sasuke the new sakura the new naruto with uh, borto sarada mitsuki uh and then we kind of see more um about like the the, the other team where uh denki um denki metal lee and Awabe, uh, Metal Lee is basically, uh, like I said, like, Rock Lee's son, um, so do not know who the mother is, but yeah, uh, he's there, um, he's very similar to his dad, but instead of, um, just, like, Taijutsu, he has a little bit of, uh, ninjutsu, and he also, uh, is a master at, um, his own Taijutsu, which is called, uh, Anxiety Fist. Uh, so basically, he can never hit straight. He's always afraid of uh, whatever's in front of him. But he seems like seems try to figure out how to like utilize that in like an actual fight. So that is something that I do want to see more of. I absolutely love him. Um, maybe like later on, we'll see like exactly what he can do. But yeah, and then we see uh, Awabe. He kind of has like this giant like uh, like this giant stick. He can kind of like produce like rocks from the ground to kind of come up. Uh, as well as like you know walls and etc. So uh, he does end up joining with Denki and Metal Lee, and they have their own team, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but yeah, not not really much is done about Awabe just yet. But uh, this this episode honestly has a nice introduction of most of like the new characters and kind of seeing like what we have to look forward to as the series does progress. Uh, we do see um, more of like their character and personality. And honestly, I'm really excited about this uh, this new series. It seems to be really, really um, hype. Uh, but yeah, uh, on our next podcast, we will go over uh, like that that next arc that I was talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and watch it before we do end up talking, just so that way I, I have more of like an idea. But uh, yeah, most of like everything that I'm saying, um, you know, our theories. Uh, I don't know what's gonna happen yet, <laughs> but uh, I do really hope that this is gonna be more. Um, or I guess as emotional as Naruto, because I know that uh, the Boruto series is a little slow at first, but it does really, really pick up. So I do recommend watching more into it. But yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and just give my top three real quick. I do really enjoy, um, of course, Metal Lee. Uh, I believe Metal, like, so Rock Lee was my favorite uh, character growing up, just because um, he had a fight um, with uh, Gaara. Uh, <laughs> Broccoli is incredibly fast. Uh, there's this moment where he basically took off his weights and he was faster than sound. Like, it was insane. So that's just, like, how much he works out, you know? Um, so I'm kind of hoping a lot from Metal Lee. I really hope that he really does pick up from his father and become a super awesome guy just like him. 
um, especially with that anxiety fist. It, it kind of reminds me of, um, you know, Rock Lee's other Taijutsu, if you guys um, know what I'm talking about. And then uh, some someone that I kind of see that people are sleeping on right now is going to be um, Shikadai. Uh, Shikadai definitely has a high, high uh, potential rate, uh, especially being the daughter or the son of uh, Tamari and Shikamaru. Um, both super intelligent, both really scary if angered. Um, but I would like to see exactly what they can do with his character. Uh, and yeah. And then the last but not least, uh, Sarada. <laughs> I really, really enjoy Sarada. She is a amazing character. Uh, if they did not start the, um, the, uh, the anime of Borto, I feel like she would have had her own spinoff, honestly, just because she is just such an interesting character, and they really, really flesh her out um, throughout the series. So I really hope that um, you guys enjoy her just, just as much as I do, because she is definitely one of a kind, and she is the backbone of her team. So uh, with all that being said, uh, there's also hoping that Sarada is going to have the same kind of traits as Itachi. We'll see what happens. But yeah, that's just my little... Um, uh, insight but yeah so uh just thank you guys so much for listening to the gsmc television podcast brought to you by the gsmc podcast network uh, i would like to ask that you please remember to, to subscribe to the show and write a nice review that really really helps us also if you can just please follow us on facebook twitter and instagram we would definitely appreciate it and uh definitely check out that twitter though because i am gonna be, i am gonna be posting weekly uh um notifications that uh you know of what arc will be going over and definitely uh you know more board to content so yeah uh thank you so much and have a great week bye-bye you've been listening to the golden state media concepts television podcast part of the golden state media concepts podcast network you can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com download our podcast on itunes stitcher soundcloud and google play just type in gsmc to find all the shows from the golden state media concepts podcast network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program